the hours, I think, a uh, year uh, for legal aid services or roughly five hours a month. And uh, I, we, we received some oppositions from some chapters. And so that's why we temporarily shelved it. But personally, I believe that it should already be implemented because we need volunteer legal aid lawyers. Probably the reason why the resolution was passed is because there are fewer lawyers who would like to serve as legal aid lawyers. And when you serve as legal aid lawyers, you're not paid for it. And we understand that. We understand that there's got to be a balance between the financial requirements of a practitioner with respect to his subsistence and the needs of his family. But, you know, as lawyers, we are officers of the court. We're supposed to devote a portion of our time to the indigent or the pauper litigants because we have to, uh, the equalize, we have to equalize the standing of the litigants before the courts. And if this litigant has no lawyer, how can he effectively assert his defenses or at least uh, obtain justice or get relief from the court because he has no lawyer and worse the case will be pending there for a long time so I believe that there should be mandatory legal aid already as a matter of fact I think five hours is a short period of time for a practitioner to render for the poor it may even be a lot longer I, probably 10 or 20 hours Actually, there's nothing wrong with providing uh, legal aid. Sometimes uh, uh, a legal aid lawyer wins a case for uh, a pauper litigant, and in the end, the pauper litigant wins, and he gets a big parcel of land, and then uh, out of generosity, he gives also the legal aid lawyer a portion. And that happened to me, and I'm happy that uh, I rendered legal aid for somebody who was not expecting anything, but in the end, I was gifted with uh, some ample uh, fee. And, and it, it's so fulfilling for a lawyer. And then I, I propose, if I'm Chief Justice, I would propose already a community legal service where the uh, new lawyer will be required to render legal aid for one year in the community of his choice under the supervision of the IBP. So that will provide uh, numerous legal aid lawyers for the popular litigants. And we should strengthen the uh, ADR uh, services of the legal aid committees. Uh, you will do a lot of, uh, uh, you will be able to help uh, a lot of litigants if the IBP should concentrate on providing mediation and conciliation services. Because it won't take much time of the lawyer, and if he's able to successfully mediate uh, the disputes between individuals, then that will be uh, one case out of the court docket. So a lot of things can be done with regard to legal aid. But then more importantly, court appearances are important. We have a rule on the official counsel. And Usually, the official counsel would only like to help during the arraignment. And after that, uh, he begs off already. So, the lawyers should help out. Uh, the courts need their participation. Uh, without their participation, cases will be delayed. Thank you. Um, thank you, Justice Velasco. Good luck po. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Justice Lagman, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Justice Velasco. It's already 5 o'clock, <laughs> and I have very few questions. <laughs> okay, uh, Justice Velasco, aside from being the second most senior associate justice in the Supreme Court, what do you think are your strong and weak points in terms of qualifications for the position of Chief Justice? Well, uh, I stated a while ago that uh, I have uh, a wealth of experience behind me with regard to the problems of the courts. Uh, probably I 
can distinguish myself as the only one among the aspirants uh, who served as court administrator for six years. Mm -mm. And uh, I guess that would be a big plus factor for me because I'm aware of all the problems encountered by the courts on the ground. And uh, right away, um, I can implement uh, the solutions that are needed to solve these problems. But more importantly, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, I was uh, at the forefront of the APJR during the time of Chief Justice Hilario Davide, and uh, all these things were already uh, taken up, reviewed, studied very well. Um, I know that uh, SGB had a uh, study already on case delay reduction and docket decongestion, and then uh, a lot of uh, institutions, foreign institutions came in during the time of uh, Chief Justice Lario Davide, and they provided uh, a lot of funding for the possible projects, the, the projects that are aimed to solve the the Per, uh, persistent and nagging problem of case delay, and uh, I've been exposed to that. I was a party to that. I was participated in all these projects. Uh, what I remember is the Kamis uh, in Pasay City. We started the court management information system in Pasay City courts, and uh, that is a good project. Uh, what we really need is case management, case management by the presiding judges, and uh, that comes really is the, probably the correct solution, and uh, the, the, the comes principle was applied in the Court of Appeals by uh, presiding justice Andres Reyes, Jr., and it has proven to be successful. The same uh, mechanics uh, are in the Pasay Kami, Kamis uh, project uh, are the ones applied in the Court of Appeals. And I'm glad that uh, Asia, was USAID through ABBA Roli was able to implement it successfully under the able leadership of uh, Presiding Justice Andres Reyes. And uh, as I said, uh, I know the other uh, problems uh, regarding the other pillars of the criminal justice system. So. I think I have the edge uh, over some of the aspirants, but I know Senior Justice Antonio Carpio and uh, Justice Teresita de Castro are also very aware of uh, all these problems, and uh, they are now on top of this also. And uh, I'm number two, and usually in the court, uh, the court is steep in uh, seniority and tradition, and. If you're number two or number one, like uh, Senior Justice Antonio Carpio, there is that built-in respect already for the Senior Justices. And uh, I feel uh, I, I'll be able to, uh, to persuade the members to work uh, closely with me in solving the problems that confront the judiciary. I've been with them, some of them, I've been with some of them uh, for almost six years, some for four years, some for three years, and over these years we have uh, developed uh, a good relationship, uh, although we have heated debates, we have some problems that we are able to reconcile, and uh, if fortunate enough to be appointed, uh, I believe I have the experience and the management uh, abilities to lead the court. Okay. Justice, uh, in spite of the projects, several projects which you have mentioned a while ago, aimed at solving the problem of delay in the disposition of cases, it is uh, sad to know that this problem still persists. As a matter of fact, uh, Justice Abad, when he was here the other day, admitted that there are still old cases pending before the Supreme Court 
for this position. In your opinion, what is the 